got a decent match of 1.49 to 1 using our very, very simple old school LMAC. Hi, and welcome to the Art of Engineering, a place where art and engineering collide. In today's episode, we're looking at a really, really old school L-match antenna tuner. So, if you've never seen an L-match, this is an L-match. Um, we might just toddle off to the board and have a look at the circuit for this very, very simple tuner and discuss its operation. To the board. Okay, folks, we're looking at the schematic for the L-match and you can see that the shape of it, the actual circuit, is an L, and that's why it's called an L match. Pretty obvious, really. Now, if you go to the link below, I do a basic lecture on antennas and antenna theory. So jump into that link, because basically an antenna behaves like a tuned circuit. So it's got a balance of inductance and capacitance. And sometimes when things get out of balance, or the antenna's too short or too long, which is why it gets out of balance usually, you can add a little bit of inductance or a little bit of capacitance, which brings it up to a resonant, or makes the transmitter think the antenna is resonant, and it allows transfer of power past that point. Now obviously, if there's a very bad SWR between the transmission line then and the antenna, after the antenna tuner, you're gonna have issues with loss and um, antenna efficiency and whatnot, but at HF frequencies, not at VHF or UHF, at HF frequencies, things are a lot more forgiving, okay? So we can get away with murder, essentially. So just stay away from microwave and all that crap. Anyway, this is an L match, and basically what happens is our transmitter or our receiver comes in here, and we've got this tapped coil. So we can adjust our value of inductance by moving this tap across the coil and clipping it on. It's an alligator clip on my design. And then we've got our variable capacitor, which is an old capacitor out of a, a uh, an AM radio, and then we come up here and we go into our antenna. It's as simple as that. We all knew it was coming. Could you please just reach down and hit the subscribe button and maybe the like? It'd be really nice to know people are watching this. I'm hoping someone's getting something from this. And please, drop a comment because I love being part of the ham community. I think it's a great thing to be part of. So drop us a, a, a comment. That would be fantastic. I'd also like to acknowledge the videos that I've been watching. Uh, there's a video from a Mr. Laughlin. Uh, he did a video on, on an L-match antenna tuner. There's lots of L-match antenna tuner videos, but that's the one that I watched and I thought was really good and really informative. So I'll drop a link for that below too. And of course, Mr. Peter Parker, VK3YE, did a fantastic video on an L-match that doesn't require a variable capacitor because they're quite hard to find sometimes. And he's actually done one that's using bits of circuit board, which is a really interesting concept as well. So sharing the love, spreading the love, not that they need the subscribers, because I'm the one that needs the subscribers. So hit the, hit the subscribe button. See you in the rest of the video. So we've got this scrap piece of timber, nice piece of ply, and this is the variable capacitor that I bought from Hungary, and our piece of PVC piping. So this will be our L-match antenna tuner that will hopefully make our antenna resonant. <laughs> this 
this is the scatological way I tend to work. As I'm waiting for one thing to happen, I'll go on to something else. And this is going to be the base for our uh, ATU when it's done. And um, I've done like a charred finish on one side and some lovely gold gouache around the edges. So, see ya! And now we're just going to have our little uh, continuity test here. We're just going to see whether we're actually uh, clearing the uh, insulator. That one needs a bit more work. Probably go underneath as well. Yeah, so we need to work on the underneath. It's getting very late and uh, I forgot to varnish the board before I assembled the L-match so we've had to varnish around things but it just adds to the rustic charm of this device. Now that we've got the L-match completed I wanted to run another piece of coax through the wall because I strongly suspect my 10 metre or well, the, the antenna is not going to resonate on 10 metres so this is going to allow me to have another piece of coax outside which is probably one that I'll put a connector on and I'll be able to swap it between different antennas so my mainstay will be the NFED that uh, there's a series of videos on the whole antenna saga for that so click on the ham playlist on the art of engineering if you're interested in seeing how that all pans out we've also got a piece of earth wire here and that is running to a stake outside that's been driven into the ground, a copper, it's actually an old piece of copper water pipe. So I'm using what I've got lying around. This is the, actually the earth wire out of a piece of mains cabling from when we did the renovation. And so I'm trying to use what I've got. And of course, I was lucky enough to have this drill bit here, which I think I needed for also when I was doing the re renovation. So look, you use what you've got. And it is nice to be able to get cables uh, through the wall to the nearest place possible. Some people don't like to drill into their building. Some people are renting. So you just need to find a way around whatever your situation is. But I'm going to run this earth cable. I'm going to attach it to the desk and I'm going to have an earth point on the desk so that I'll be able to run cables off that. So if I'm ever prototyping or I need a, a decent earth for RF, it's there. So uh, when we sit this uh, screw with the earth on it, up under the desk, it will hopefully get right through and we'll be able to bolt it down. And then I'm just going to run wires off the top here. So just give me a second and we'll get that all in place. <laughs> if there's the opportunity for a, a little bit of art to happen, we just can't really help ourselves. I'm going to make this a really nice green and yellow stripy earth point so that it... Uh, you can't miss it. Now, because I'm painting over black, I'm going to probably have to do a couple of layers. So I'm really creating a lot of pain for myself, really. Hi, and as always, rough and ready, because that's the kind of person I am, and there's no point in trying to be something that you're not. Okay,
that's nicer than that left me some screws in here. Extra long. Old light switch or old PowerPoint actually. Um, but it'll do the job. Now I just need to go outside and uh, silicone the uh, holes in the shed. Okay, so this is the side of the shed. That's how RF choke for stopping RF from getting in the, into the shack coming from our antenna, our infed antenna. That's our counterpoise, and I've run the counterpoise down to an earth here that's, uh, that's been <laughs> hose clamped on there. And we've also now got a shack earth, which I'll also terminate there with a, with a hose clamp, and an extra piece of coax. As I suspected, a lot of bleed. But uh, hey, we have a paintbrush, we can fix that up. It's got little feet on it now, and um, an adjusting knob. We've decided to give it another quick coat rather thick coat of black paint. Okay folks, uh, here we're looking at the antenna straight into the device. We've done a calibration, open, short and load for SWR. And basically on the left hand side we have 3 megahertz and we're at 2.64 to 1 SWR. And as we, uh, as we move along, uh, we'll get up to 3.3. The SWR is ever so slightly going down, 2.6. When we get to 3.7, it's still at 2.6 to 1 SWR. So not atrociously bad, but not really good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our L match and we're going to have a look at what the antenna is um, doing when we match it with the L match, see if we can get it lower. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've left the capacitor fully engaged, the highest value capacitance, and we have moved the tap until we get the lowest. So at the moment it's higher than it was. So now let's just adjust our capacitor and see what happens. You can see as I crank out the capacitor, our SWR starts to drop. And quite markedly towards the bottom. So at the moment, that's the 3.7. Now I'm going to move the tap because I happen to know that if we move one across, uh, we get an even flatter response. So that's now um, at 3.7, we have a 1.6 to 1 SWR. So that's very uh, a very usable uh, SWR. As we get down to the low 3.5s, it's 1.44 to 1. So um, I am extremely pleased with that and as you can see I'll just pan across here to the uh, to the L match um, I might try and get them both in screen hold on sorry for the uh, crappy production values as I move the capacitor in you'll notice on our nano VNA the uh, the SWR starts to climb and it's climbed to nearly 4.38 so we've got a decent match of 1.49 to 1 using our very very simple old school L match antenna tuner so I'm really happy about that we've got an 80 meter antenna now I don't know how much power is actually getting to the into the sky to the gods of DX but we shall find out when we start using it um, once we've got a transmitter and a license, um, I'm qualified for the license, I just need to apply. This is straight into the antenna, sweeping from 28 megahertz on the left 
across to 29 on the right. So at 28.1 roughly, we're looking at the, uh, I think that's the beginning of the CW band or around where the CW band is. I haven't looked at the band plans recently. Um, but as we sweep across, it goes from 5 to 1 SWR, which is very high. As we get up into, you know, 28.4 or so, it's still just under 5 to 1 SWR. So it's a pretty rotten SWR. So now we're going to plug it into the L match and see whether this can uh, tune up on 28, 10 meter band. Now, with a dead short across the inductance coil, so pretty much the lowest inductance you can get. In fact, I've actually gone past the inductor to where the capacitor is actually joining up. Um, we managed to get an SWR of virtually one to one. Um, you can see that's with the capacitor at its lowest value too. If I crank the capacitor up ever so slightly, uh, the SWR just escalates rapidly. Um, so it will load up. So to get it to load at 28, I've actually had to jump over here and completely bypass the inductor. So look, there would be a bit of inductance in that wire. So we're looking at a very low inductance and um, right at the bottom of the capacitor here because the, the plates are completely out. But yes, we do get an SWR of 1.01 to 1. Um, but yeah, I strongly suspect that's going to be a very... Uh, poor performance but time will tell what I could also do is um, because this is a ganged capacitor and these front and back sections are ganged together I could actually put a switch in here and switch out um, one of the halves of the capacitor and that could give me more range but it appears that I can still tune up so I'm happy to leave it at that so now we just get it on the air and see how it performs but our first test will probably be, I'm hoping, on 3.5 megs with a small homemade uh, receiver and transmitter. And then uh, when I get the, the QCX mini kit done, um, I will be doing uh, 7 megs as well. But we'll test, we'll, we'll just see what it looks like on 7 megahertz. Now. This is 7 to 8 megahertz. And if you sweep across, it's a pretty flat 2.7 to 1. Um, I did try adjusting the length of the antenna. Um, it didn't seem to have, make a huge amount of difference. Uh, there's so much metal around. Uh, this would probably be the frequency where you're expecting the lowest uh, SWR and certainly that seemed to be the, the, the lowest point resonance uh, on the actual sweep when we did uh, 1 megahertz to 30 megs. And if you want to see how that all happened and how that all came about, uh, jump into my playlist and have a look at the four videos I did on the actual antenna, its installation and its and thoughts around the actual antenna that I'm using, which is an N-fed quarter wave at 7 megahertz with a trap and a little tail to get it up onto the 80 meter band. And it's fed with a 49 to 1 un-un. And I've counterpoised it as well. So that is the SWR without the... L match. Let's have a look at what it's doing when we try and use our L match. With the 7 megahertz, we had a 2.7 to 1 without the L match. With our L match, we've got a 1 to 1.05, so virtually 1 to 1 SWR. Uh, that's at the um, frequency of 7.47. So it's been a long and industrious day. We have an earth point on the desk. We have a completed L-match antenna tuning unit that is working and tomorrow I'm going to start work on a 3.5 megahertz receiver and hopefully, probably not by tomorrow, but in the next couple of days you'll see a video of a working receiver. Fingers crossed because I am a bit of a klutz. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. Like I said, if you could hit the like and subscribe, that would be wonderful. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Toodaloo.